Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back again to the online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture. Today we are at lecture number 35 and this is uh, something interesting that we will discuss uh, in this lecture. So far whatever we have uh, understood about different structural form, different requirement, even recently we have covered uh, the structural form and structural arrangement for like uh, seismic prone area, windy area and there are different consideration. Now in this uh, lecture we will be focusing on uh, the structure and light in architecture. So there are some structural arrangements, structural form which will help to uh, uh, allow daylight and the natural light alternatively we can say uh, to create some beautiful form and architecture. So in this lecture we will be discussing on those kind of uh, structural element and also we will go through some of the examples. So let us get started. So at the beginning uh, if we just uh, try to again recap what is architecture and then the many definitions will come into picture like it is articulation of space sometimes it can be represented by the texture, different component of design, the color and then the uh, is shape space. So like that here uh, what is written in this slide the aspect of architecture, the aspect of architecture such as space, material, color depends on the lighting situation and it is obviously uh, true and we all accept that. In absence of light we cannot actually see any objects and even uh, we can change the color of the object with some lighting uh, because of different filtration nowadays even we know these things, uh, this is available in our uh, smartphone devices, different photograph that we take and then we apply different filter, different toning. So by which uh, the changing the color uh, of the light and the intensity we can really make a change in the outcome. So that is true for uh, this case where uh, the light, then the object and observer, these three parameters will determine. Uh, how we can perceive one structure. Uh, and next like different uh, visual experience and moods being provoked by the application of dynamic daylight and artificial lighting and uh, definitely it has a relation uh, with your um, visual experience. Uh, say if it is too much glary, if too much light is coming in a summer day. Uh, along with all this light and other thing our perception we feel it a uh, little bit warm whereas a very dim light, uh, very shallow opening will give a sense of something very close and dense and this is uh, uh, related to the daylight. But when you consider the artificial lighting then also if we go to a restaurant we definitely do not expect a very high exposure or uh, very you know light uh, like uh, maybe which is uh, very much required in operation theatre, maybe a dim light, maybe a different tint of yellowish, uh, reddish or whatever the color that we prefer. This kind of ambience in the restaurant and the party area will change the ambience, the same form, same infrastructure will look in a different manner. So light and architecture have very close relation, so that is already uh, been experienced by all of us. So in absence of light we cannot see anything, in presence of light depending on the intensity, depending on the direction, depending on the color tint of the light we visualize the object in a different manner. Now if that is true that they have the relation, so, so as true with the structural form, so different structural form that may uh, facilitate to welcome the light inside a structure. So here you can see in this image, this is a wooden structure, a very simple structure where you can see these columns and then beams and then at the rooftop uh, there is some 
kind of you know uh, uh, percolation there is some perforation. So, this perforation through this perforation the daylights are coming inside and that is creating uh, shade and light ambience which uh, indeed uh, giving a different experience than if we just cover it up with some opaque material. Now, uh, let us experience a few more uh, with some images. So, in this, this is somewhere very simple structure where uh, you can identify this uh, column and beam and this whole opening being uh, just covered with some uh, frame and the glass and then basically it is maximize the light. So, the whole floor being in the daytime and uh, this is looking at this. So, this outside this is basically the courtyard. So, from courtyard, so this with the reflectance with the indirect light. So, this whole area is under light. So, this will give some uh, different feeling of uh, like the vastness and all. Along with that, it will also help to uh, do some kind of saving in energy point of view. Coming to the next one, again this is a structure where different shade being created with a jali where uh, this being created with uh, some kind of you know square and rectangle and the interior you can see that uh, a nice texture being created whether it is on a circular column or even on the floor. So, this uh, dark and light dark and light. So, this create a different ambience it is very simple with this structure where some perforation being made some kind of jelly form being created and with the daylight this is creating definitely a very nice uh, you know ambience inside the structure. Now, uh, moving uh, forward to this one where this is a swimming pool and where uh, the roof been covered with some kind of structural arrangement where you know with the inclination with the sun. So, there is a indirect light penetration not the direct one not the direct glare here also the application of jali by which the light can easily penetrate and this whole area is giving a dramatic feeling uh, which is also uh, one of uh, the point of appreciation in this case where this whole area in the day time is being illuminated. Now, the question is if it is so then what will be the case in case of the heavy rainfall or maybe uh, like there is heavy dust. So, definitely for that this will not be really uh, a good option, but uh, wherever the option is there we can uh, still maximize the daylight in terms of making things beautiful if we place in order we will get a better result along with that some saving on energy consumption as well. Now, this is another one uh, this is very beautiful example I liked it much. So, with this small opening you can see that how this light being reflected from the ceiling and create some nice ambience in this particular corridor. So, with uh, direct uh, light to this surface and then the reflected light which create a different gradient at the rooftop. So, in this image this gradient is giving some uh, you know different feeling and this light and shade is giving adequate uh, lighting to work in the daytime and this is creating nice uh, environment. Coming uh, to this example where uh, the truss uh, the member like this uh, you know line that angular member being repeatedly used and that is being covered with a glass in order to stop the rainwater penetration to the building, but this is uh, giving enough indirect light okay, which is uh, refracted from this ceiling and then it is creating nice environment. So, this is another application where this uh, the structural form that uh, the system the arrangement that been picked up which maximize the penetration of daylight. Coming to this, this is another uh, example where you are building this particular dining area and this is the kitchen area being uh, illuminated by the daylight. So, what exactly it has been uh, they, uh, in this uh, uh, you know example what the architect uh, has done here that uh, put some glass uh, in this particular cover. So, which will allow uh, this 
building to take the light inside. At the same time, it will protect the building from the rain or such you know dust from the outside. So, this is another application and again with this uh, white color and this with reflectance. So, this is giving a, a sense of uh, you know gradient. So, it is giving nice experience. Now, this is the example from uh, the Louvre Museum. So, here also the in, in interior story, uh, the in interior space of uh, this building is really uh, getting the maximum of the daylight with this uh, you know steel members, steel frames and along with this glass covering. So, which will protect from the external uh, rain or maybe the wind, but at the same time it will have a direct connection with the outside environment. So, this is creating a nice sense where the structure being used to welcome the light. Now, coming to the light source and structure, this is very important uh, and so far whatever I uh, just uh, told about is all related to the daylight or the natural light and the source is sun basically. But in this context of the source, the structure as a source of light refers to the type of structure which will allow direct light penetration, the maximum light it can penetrate. In many cases, it may happen that the uh, structural material that we use of translucent type where a diffuse light can you know enter. Say for example, um, if we consider the membrane, in membrane structure depending on the translucency of the uh, you know the membrane, we can get some diffuse light, but in the system wherever a system being aligned they join together or creating with the truss kind of material, it will be more effective. So, here in this uh, what is mentioned, the sun is the clearly source of the natural light, open structural forms like trusses, space frame, mega structural openings and even the areas where the structural members are normally connected, those areas can admit light if we can uh, do it in a uh, nice manner. In this context, definitely uh, in order to get the light inside, you have to have some opening. So, that is why like the skeletal quality of uh, moment or rigid frame. So, where you just make your structure with beam and column and the rest of the things you can either fill with the machinery work, but that will reduce the opening percentage of the facet or else you go for the you know structural glazing with the glass like this building, um, the way we can see, so which will allow more light to pass on. So, that is why the skeletal quality of this rigid frame is more con conducive to you know allow or you know passage of uh, conducive to the passage of light than opaque structural walls. So, in the high rise structure what we have seen that in order to make it more resi uh, resilient to the lateral load, if we can go with the shear wall. So, which is basically a very solid and opaque uh, screen, which will definitely protect in that sense, but that will also block the view. So, in that case, if we can go alternatively with some frame or super frame that may uh, really help. So, we will be discussing on high rise structure in some upcoming uh, lectures of this course. Uh, there we will see that how alternatively we can even uh, make our high rise building structural uh, like um, you know, structurally resilient to, to uh, for this kind of lateral load without compromising the opening uh, for the building, opening to the outside of the building. Now, uh, again uh, the structural function as a primary light source basically which uh, will allow uh, like uh, the passage of the light occurs where the light passes through an opaque skeletal structure. So, uh, it is uh, better to have a skeleton structure like uh, making of the space frame, making with some wall truss, something like uh, you know, this arch form where the covering will be done with some glass material or transparent or uh, translucent material. So, that will help to welcome the light. So, here you can see uh, two images where this uh, particular space is being formed with this frame 
where the arch frames being uh, made as a structural component and then uh, this being connected with uh, again steel and being covered with the glass. So, that will protect uh, from maybe the direct heat this will have this property of the structural uh, you know which will not allow anti glare uh, glasses so which will um, like minimize the glare as well as it will give the adequate light. Down this example is from your uh, Bangkok uh, airport, so where you can see the waiting area this is uh, being illuminated uh, with the daylight which this again uh, your you know some kind of uh, structural arrangement with the steel frame and then the glass combination. And this application is not uh, uh, it is only used for this airport, most of the airports that we can take the airports in India, international airport or maybe there are examples where uh, this kind of waiting area and where uh, you have some kind of uh, you know transition. So, those areas being highly illuminated with the natural light with the truss uh, frame or maybe the space frame uh, and that is basically giving a nice experience of light and shade along with the energy uh, efficiency. Coming to the structural form and light, so if we can classify the structural arrangement uh, which will direct to the uh, you know allowing the light and all. So, we can uh, specify it in four different ways. One is the structure as a source of the light, then the structure used for maximizing the light where the main uh, the whole structure probably uh, we are making to in, uh, you know get the light inside. Maybe a glass house concept where we need uh, to have this kind of structural composition where the inside will get uh, the maximum light from uh, your the natural sources. Then the modifier of the light sometimes we may use some structural uh, form or structural uh, material which will modify the light, modify the light in the sense like uh, it may be due to the reflectance of the uh, uh, you know light or maybe it is due to some filtration. So, whatever the light form so that will be little bit filtered to that structural system and create some different uh, ambience. So, we will uh, see the example in this category as well and then the modified light, uh, uh, modified light is basically uh, modified uh, uh, by light. So, if we uh, now look into this uh, you know structural form that will allow light or that is welcoming the natural light uh, to the inside of any architecture. So, we can broadly classify them into four category. The first category that you can see in this slide that the structure as a source of light. So, some structural arrangement like truss or space frame which will allow direct light to come inside or uh, you know that will uh, help to you know create environment like the airport I have shown and there will be more example to come. Then uh, there is another structural arrangement which can maximize the light. So, the objective of those structure is basically to maximize the daylight penetration. So, like in a glass house uh, where you create a dome like structure or vault like structure where uh, this is basically some kind of you know steel frame and that being actually uh, repeated and then finally, what we get this particular form which is full uh, transparent. So, where the light can easily uh, penetrate. So, we use the maximum daylight. Now, uh, when we call uh, this the penetration of the light, so many a times we will avoid the glare, we only get the diffuse light or maybe sometimes the direct light uh, if we can um, you know allow that. Then the modifier of the light sometimes the structure being used uh, to modify the light it will create it will help to create some light and shade combination which enhance the quality the visual quality of architecture that we have discussed the different visual quality uh, at the beginning of this lecture maybe the first week uh, there we have uh, first week lectures that we covered based on that the visual quality now the last but not the least is uh, the modified by light so, 
sometimes the structure uh, in case like whatever the form, the texture, the position, uh, this kind of visual appearance will be modified by the light. So, with the direction of light, with the amount of light and int in intensity. So, that can be also one of the component that structure getting uh, modified with the light. So, now we will focus on each of them and try to understand that with some example. Now, uh, in this category where the source of light, so this is one example from a uh, sports center where uh, now in uh, this is a you know time you can easily identify this structure and yes I guess all of you uh, got it. So, this is your um, tensile fabric structure. So, these are nothing but the you know compressive mast and this is the membrane which will be giving tension. Now, the point is uh, with this translucency of the material, it will allow light inside is one portion, but if you see that particular joints where uh, this you know floated members is getting attached or maybe with the mast. So, this portion is allowing the direct light penetration. So, this is very useful. So, this portion is basically a conical shape and this being attached with this. So, this portion will allow light to go inside. So, this portion is maximum uh, you know allowing light directly inside. So, daylight enters the junction between uh, your flying start. So, this portion and also the fabric membrane. So, this is one of the such structure where this can be done. Even the application of this membrane structure is mostly used in your stadium and in the stadium we also get some kind of diffuse light for the spectators. This is another wonderful example from San Francisco International Airport where uh, the whole structure is being made with the uh, truss frame and in this uh, you can get a very nice combination. So, this kind of folded this boat like structure is uh, also giving a sense of a petal and this is giving a nice view of the roof as well as uh, essential functionally it is giving some light inside. So, all these openings if you see this detail, so this form allow the light to enter and then the area being illuminated. So, light passes through a three dimensional truss uh, that we have discussed in the truss section and this is how this being done. Coming uh, to the same category, now here it is a sports hall in Barcelona, where at the corners you can see that uh, the arrangement of the truss in such a manner that will allow daylight to come. Along with the artificial light, uh, definitely uh, whenever at night time we will not really um, you know get light, but in the daylight system we can easily see that how this can be uh, used very effectively. Coming to the uh, you know Borel collection uh, museum, here also this peach roof where the different wooden members is being uh, repeatedly used and then it is covered with the glass material and that is creating a very nice environment uh, at the atrium. So, this is another example where the structure being used as a source of light. So, if uh, this could be alternatively done with the opaque uh, or the flat roof or maybe the opaque uh, peach roof. So, this kind of interesting environment will not be created. So, this application of your using structure in a manner where the you know light can penetrate and create this kind of beautiful environment is always uh, you know appreciable job. Coming to the another example, this is the railway station uh, in your uh, uh, in uh, France, the you know Satlas airport. So, in this case you can see that uh, the structure is nothing but a frame again, uh, but this time it is made of concrete not the steel and uh, this is designed in such a manner that the place the gap between these two uh, portal is being covered with glass and that is giving enough light to you know illuminate this concourse level. This is another view of the same 
where uh, this being taken from this direction. So, the glazing centered over the main concourse allows daylight and this is really that uh, arrangement is similar to the petal arrangement that we have seen in the San Francisco International Airport. Here also in this railway station, uh, we get this ambience. Coming to uh, the next category that maximizing the light. So, this is the trade fair glass hall in Germany. So, in this case also this vault uh, being created with uh, your steel members and then uh, the, that being supported outside uh, by some kind of space frame that you can see that how the structure being supported externally uh, with these members. But here you can see that the whole structure is uh, visually very light and also it will uh, maximize the daylight penetration. This is similar to the example that we have seen in case of uh, your uh, Louvre Museum. So, in this it is the same uh, concept of maximizing daylight. Now, coming to the modifier of the light. So, here it is basically allowing the light, but uh, creating those kind of briefs pattern and these you know lines is uh, generating some kind of shade in a continuous spectrum of light and then that is creating some shadow shade and um, uh, shadow on the surface uh, in the interior which is basically nothing but a filter. Now, this filtration is through the uh, members sometimes this filtration may also be done with the change in material with a colored glass, but in point of structural point of view we just obstruct it with different pattern of uh, your structural arrangement. So, mostly what we have seen is uh, related to the skeletal structure and the stress uh, space frame. So, these are being very much useful material to do this mostly in the station area if you see many of the uh, you know uh, Indian railway stations or maybe in abroad uh, the stations where this kind of platform we get the use of the truss and portal frame where the light being created. Uh, in the same context even if you see some of the factory uh, they are the not skylight uh, that is the term terminology used. So, they have made uh, this kind of truss uh, system. So, where uh, the light can penetrate uh, through this surface and then it will allow this kind of truss is allowing uh, the north light truss is allowing the uh, sunlight to enter uh, in the functional area and then uh, the adequate illumination is being achieved. So, illumination is a lighting and um, uh, you know whatever uh, the label of the light uh, that is referred to that. Now, coming to the last category of that uh, and I have picked up only one example, but there are many where we can have this kind of uh, devices. So, this is example from city of arts and science in uh, you know Valencia, Spain. Now, coming to the last uh, example in this category uh, like the modified by the light. So, what a interesting thing that you can see that because of the heavy glare and light. So, if you see this picture uh, and if you see the predominancy, so this particular frame like this portion is almost uh, you know ended or almost uh, visually uh, being omitted uh, at this Linton level. So, the glare uh, dematerialized the base of the portal lake. So, looking at this you hardly uh, can see this portion. So, whatever the highlighted part of this image, this is the timber showroom again from the Germany. So, they appear to be terminated at the top of the display window. So, this is the display window and this is being omitted. So, again here the amount of light, the intensity of the light, they are changing the structural arrangement. So, with that I uh, conclude this particular discussion and what we have learned from this. So, in this specially some of the buildings where uh, there is a public gathering or maybe it is your residential building and you want to maximize the daylight penetration in order to get some you know natural feeling which we can connect with the environment during the daytime. 
and as well as to some extent to um, reduce the load on the energy uh, consumption. So, you can always uh, make your structure in such a manner, make provision to get the light inside without compromising the you know to the uh, you know exposure to your rain and dust. With that uh, like um, it is basically I have talked about the natural light and based on the light uh, how the structure is interacting and all which is uh, being classified in four category. The first is your um, like structure as source of light. So, here it is basically where the structure is allowing the light. The second category that we have uh, seen that um, the structure is maximizing light. Then uh, the other third category is your um, you know your structure which uh, make the modification okay, modifying the light and then uh, structure modified by light. So, in this we have seen uh, the examples of different airport where uh, like uh, you know the top portion may be this being exposed to um, the light and then with the reflectance and all. So, this will get illuminated. Uh, in the second category maximum lies is uh, you know example of your uh, greenhouses. Uh, so, where like all these vegetations are getting the maximum of the light through the structure where like the steel frame being used and then the glass covering being used to cover it. Now, structure which is uh, modifying the light is basically the create the shading devices where instead of a uh, single frame we can use some kind of pattern uh, or jelly, jelly type of things which will you know allow uh, a light to penetrate, but that will also create a pattern. So, that is uh, being modified. Then the structure modified in the light it depends on the intensity of the light, the tint of the light by which a structure is looking in a different manner that we have seen in the last example where with a huge glare outside and with this glass what from the inside what we initially in a, in a quick glance what we see that this particular frame is being terminated here. Though it is having a presence, but again like with the glare it is uh, not that much prominent. So, with this we can create some interesting uh, structural form architectural ambience that we create uh, playing with the light and the material selection. And in this uh, what we have seen most of the time that this can be created with the skeletal, uh, skeletal structure rather than a opaque structural walls or the machinery wall. So, wherever we go for the uh, no frame, uh, beam, column structure and uh, structural glazing. So, that will help to maximize it. And for the roof covering for the open public area like the airport or the stadium or maybe somewhere is a convention hall. In that case we can use the light structure uh, of like space frame or truss to do this kind of arrangement where that will help to welcome light in a larger quantity without compromising uh, the other adverse effect for the opening. So, with this we can really create. So, this is all about uh, your structure and light interaction in architecture. So, with this I uh, stop here and um, these are the study material you can go through. Already I have uh, given this uh, book references earlier, but then also you can um, go through it if you can get access to this. So, with that we will be looking for uh, something that I have talked about so many times in recent times that we will be discussing on the high rise structure, how this will be designed. So, we will be talking on your uh, evaluation of high rise structural system in my next uh, lecture and we will be discussing on different uh, structural composition and then we will slowly uh, 
um, go with uh, each of the component where for uh, this high rise uh, building phenomena against the wind and earthquake and how different system can resist it. So, uh, with that um, I again thank you all to take part in this course and we will be meeting in my next uh, discussion in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you.